In this video, we'll briefly explain what we mean by targeted light and why it's essential for effective lighting. Responsible Outdoor Lighting Principle 2 emphasizes the importance of precisely targeting outdoor lighting to areas only where lighting is needed, ensuring both quality and responsibility in outdoor lighting design. Targeted lighting involves several key factors, including proper fixture placement and direction, effective shielding, and precise optics. These elements work together to ensure light is concentrated on its intended area, below the horizontal plane, and not upward into the sky. Unfortunately, many outdoor light fixtures direct light far beyond their intended targets and often into the sky. To get back on track and make sure light hits its intended target, light fixtures should be fully shielded. This also begins to concentrate the light instead of wasting it. Nader is the point directly beneath the light source. Any light above 90 degrees from Nader is wasted and contributes to light waste. If light is prevented from going above 90 degrees, the light fixture is defined as fully shielded. Even light in the 80 to 90 degree range adds little value and still increases light pollution. Which is why we aim for an 80 degree cutoff through proper shielding and optics, as this reduces both light spillage and glare. It's important to note LED fixtures tend to offer the best solutions for targeted lighting, especially when compared to older legacy systems when it comes to certain scenarios like lighting on streets and pathways, parking lots or sports fields, directing light so it falls only where it is needed is smart and sensitive lighting design. This can enhance safety, increase reassurance, and preserve the nighttime environment. To further control this our ordinance template state, luminaires emitting more than 1,000 lumens shall be fully shielded and shall emit no more than 5% of their total lumen output above 80 degrees from Nader. Light trespass occurs when unwanted light from one property shines unforgivingly into another property. We've all experienced this, the annoying floodlight in the neighbor's yard that spills through your bedroom at night, disrupting your sleep. In other cases, that light could cast into the woods, lakes, oceans, and more, disrupting critical nocturnal wildlife habitats. As stated in our ordinance templates, Light trespass. Unless otherwise specified in this ordinance, light trespass shall meet the following. 1. Luminaire light sources shall not be visible from federal or state designated wilderness, natural area, habitat or reserves, and light trespass shall measure no greater than 0.1 lux. 2. Light trespass onto waters of the United States shall be no greater than 1 lux. 3. Light trespass onto residential use property shall be no greater than 1 lux. In addition, light trespass leaving residential use property shall be no greater than 1 lux. Note, light trespass limits are measured at any location along a property line both horizontally at the ground plane, facing upward, and vertically at 1.5 meters, which is around 5 feet above grade, with the meter aimed toward the light source in question. Our ordinance templates are free to download from our website please click the link down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more responsible and quality outdoor lighting information.